Testing the latest and greatest in extruder technology, the Bontec LGX on the Prusa Mark III and Artillery 3D Sidewinder X1. Ready printer extruder and hot end designs have come a long way in the last few years. A significant advancement was the dual drive setup from Bontech, which used two hopped gears rather than one to grip the filament from both sides for a big increase in pushing power. Printers like the Prusa Mark III and Creality CR10S Pro ended up with these, and this design was also found in the E3D Hamera, which was considered a significant step forward, spawning clones like the Big Tree Tech H2 as seen in the BQBX. And now we're back to Bontech with their new LGX, and they've been kind enough to send me an upgrade kit for both the Prusa Mark III and Artillery 3D X1 so I can make this video. Today we'll cover everything from unboxing, installation, setup, and test prints. The LGX is a premium product, and it's not meant to be for everyone. So even if you're not in the market, I urge you to watch the video, critique the design, and let me know your opinion in the comments. Let's start with the obvious question, what is the Bontech LGX and why is it significant? There's a section on the Bontech website that breaks down some of the key features and there's even a video on the making of. Here's my summary of what you need to know, starting with the fact that this is a collaboration between Bontech and Slice Engineering. All of the parts that attach to the stepper motor, like the hardened steel internals and SLS nylon body are from Bontech whereas all of the hot end parts come from Slice Engineering, in this case from the Copperhead. Here's an important one, LGX stands for Large Gear Extruder and that's used to get more grip on the filament. Some light disassembly will reveal the meaning behind the name. This system you're seeing here we'll get to later, but on the bottom are the large dual drive gears. And hopefully you can tell that the diameter is a lot bigger than on other machines. This becomes obvious when we compare to a typical hopped gear as well as comparing to the original dual drive gears from the original Bontech design. The larger diameter hopped gears should mean more contact patch touching the filament and with it more grip. Like other modern designs, this is a lightweight, compact, all-in-one concept. Traditionally 3D printers have had very separate extruders and hot ends consisting of the nozzle, heater block and most importantly a heatsink. While it's still possible to configure the LGX in this configuration, as seen here on the X1 kit, it's also possible to configure it so that the hot end goes straight into the bottom of the extruder with the heatsink mounted on the side for cooling. This is keeping in line with what we see from the E3D Hamera as well as the Big Tree Tech H2, which I'll be covering in future. Both of my test printers are already direct drive, but you can still configure this with a Bowdoin tube setup. The design is modular, which means you can easily substitute a Bowdoin tube output instead. The hot end has all metal internals and comes with a hardened steel nozzle. While a small length of PTFE tube is used in the installation, this is in the cold section, and all of the parts where the filament is melted are completely metal, so you can do high temp filament and you can print with abrasive filaments too. One of the big new ideas is the pre-tension filament lever. Traditional extruders use a spring to hold tension on the filament arm and this is perhaps adjustable, but the LGX does away with this, instead having this movable lever that moves into specific positions with preset tension. Open it up and filament slides freely in and out for loading and unloading, lock it, the wheels move closer together and it gets a firm grip, and this means it can be really tight for soft flexibles. One of the best things about the LGX is that it's versatile. You can adapt the standalone product to your printer or use one of the specific upgrade kits. In fact, both of the upgrade kits that I'm testing come with the same base LGX, but then they have other parts to help adapt them to that specific printer. In the Mark III's case, quite a few parts. For the X1 kit, more or less just this fan duct. Here are some other little features that are worth mentioning. One advantage of the E3D Titan is easy access to the hobbed gear to clean out debris. The LGX has this functionality with the outside of the hob gears being easily accessible. Some extruders also have a manual wheel to push filament in and out of the system. We have the same thing on the LGX but it is a little bit cumbersome next to the filament tension wheel. 
Although there is still some foam packaging for the LGX, Bontech have put in a good effort to use cardboard where possible, including the packaging tape, as well as some scrunched up cardboard to protect some of the delicate elements. So what do we pay for this? The base LGX that can be configured for direct drive or Bowden tube comes in at US $99. But just remember, you will need some slice engineering hot end parts to be compatible. As for the kits that I've tested, the X1 kit that comes with the LGX as well as all of the mounting accessories as well as a complete copperhead hot end comes in at $246 US dollars. The Prusa Mark III kit also comes with the LGX, a copperhead hot end and this specific LGX heatsink as well as quite a few SLS parts to adapt it to the Mark III and comes in at $257 US. As this packing slip suggests, I received all of these for free for the purpose of making this video. So not cheap, but please remember this product is not aiming to be a budget upgrade, but rather the best that you can get. Let's turn our attention to the installation process for these two printers. Credit where credit is due here because the documentation is really thorough. With a series of videos for each upgrade kit detailing every step to the point of showing every nut and bolt. Because of this and to keep this video concise, what I'll now present is more of an overview to give you the gist of what you're in for and we're going to start with the Artillery 3D X1. I did have some existing mods on this machine such as a Wham Bam bed, a BL Touch using the Wagster mod and an SKR version 1.4 running RepRap firmware. The extruder and hot end were still stock however with clones of the E3D Titan and Volcano hot end still running a standard 0.4mm nozzle. As you might have guessed we start with disassembly and that basically involves unbolting everything you see until it's clear of the printer. Once you can move clear to the bench, the process becomes easier still and ultimately you're trying to separate the X1's aluminium bracket, the thermistor and heater cartridge. We now begin to prepare the LGX, removing the standard screws in the back of the stepper motor and instead inserting these threaded studs that we'll be adding parts to later. We need to temporarily remove the direct drive output and mount it to the top of the copperhead heatsink before bolting it back onto the LGX. Following this step, we're ready to start assembling it, sandwiching the two halves either side of the X1 bracket. Now it's simply a case of tightening up the fasteners, reinstalling the X1's original thermistor and heater cartridge, and finally the breakout board that interfaces with the ribbon cable. I'm running the Wagster mod to mount my BL Touch on the X1, and I was worried that this might interfere with the LGX. The base mount that goes underneath the part cooling fan was completely unaffected so that made things easy. At this point it's just a matter of inserting the whole print head back onto the X carriage, securing it with four bolts and plugging back in the ribbon cable. And yes I have one of the early models where the ribbon cable actually locks in place and this has been perfectly reliable. You'll notice that the middle two wires are crossed over for the short loom that goes between the breakout board and the stepper motor. We need to alter the middle two wires so that everything runs parallel. After that, we can plug it back in and reinsert the cover over the top of the breakout board. And your final step should be to plug in the SLS nylon part cooling fan duct. Overall, this X1 kit is more compact, apart from the nozzle that sits down lower than the old system. Therefore, the kit comes with a new mount for the Z axis end stop to correct its position. I was running a BL Touch however, so I loaded part of the Wagster mod into Mesh Mixer, extended it, printed it out on the Prusa Mini which has a small nozzle for these small parts, and that allowed me to get the BL Touch low enough to position it the correct offset from the tip of the nozzle. My lucky last step was to put on a shiny Bontech sticker. In my opinion that was pretty straightforward. If you take away the time to watch their videos, realistically you can get this done in 30 to 60 minutes. Now the Prusa Mark III is a bit harder, but not through any fault of the kit, but rather the complexity built into this design. Unlike the X1, my Prusa Mark III is stock as a rock with one exception, and that's that it's already had the Bontech upgrade extruder fitted in a previous video. Once again, we start with disassembly, and what you're seeing is different to me if your machine is still stock, but once again, we're just gonna undo nuts and bolts until everything comes loose. What makes this installation harder is that you have to trace back and unplug wiring at the main board, simply so you can feed the plugs back through and out this small exit at the back of the print head. 
and here is the old parts that I've removed from my printer and only one component will be reused. We now begin to prepare the LGX parts, removing the standard nylon direct drive output and instead fitting this metal part in its place. Thermal paste is required to go between the heater block and this metal mount and also between the metal mount and the heatsink, which bolts on in one corner. That's the LGX together, so now we need to take all of the SLS nylon parts to adapt it to the Mark III carriage. This typically involves inserting captive nuts and then bolting components together with the supplied screws. Once again, the instructions are clear if you take it step by step. The top two LGX bolts are removed. We add the adapter and the LGX together and use some longer bolts to secure the two as one item. There's a lot of focus put on cable management, just like the original Mark III design, so everything is kept tidy as the electronics are added back on. This kit appears to be made for the Mark III S, not the standard Mark III like I have, which means I have the old optical filament runout sensor. It's incompatible, so I've put them aside for now. With our sub-assembly complete, we insert the final captive nuts, and we commence adding the print head back to the printer, utilizing the existing system of cable ties over bearings. The belt for the X-axis is inserted into the new part the same way it was in the original. After this, the X-axis belt can be tensioned. The new backing plate that comes with the kit is then moved into position and the total of five M3 bolts are used to hold it in place. The loom can then be wrapped, cable tied and fed back into the main board with everything reconnected to finish our install, which I think is looking pretty tidy. Because of the extra disassembly, as well as the extra parts in the adapter kit, I think it's safer to leave around half a day for this one. But before we move on, here's a couple of things that caught me out. This acrylic part is meant to go between the breakout board and the back of the extruder, except it didn't fit over the new studs. I tried to drill it out, but cut corners and used too big a drill bit, smashed the corner, but I found that it fit without anything touching and shorting an electrical connection, so that's how I bolted it back on. I found that the X1 couldn't home the X axis because the heatsink fan was colliding with the stepper motor mount, so I simply rotated the heatsink 90 degrees, which gave me plenty of clearance and still sufficient airflow. Now we'll cover any required firmware changes. Since we kept the same heater cartridge as well as the mister, firmware changes are actually quite minimal. Listed in the technical specifications on the website is the new E-Steps value of 400 and for the X1, that's the only change required. Instructions on how to do this without recompiling firmware are covered on my calibration website, which is linked in the description. Since this printer was running RepRap firmware in my case, all I had to do was update my config G file and restart. The Mark III is slightly more complicated, but still easy. There's a link to a firmware section on the instruction website and a link to pre-compiled hex files, which you can download to suit your particular printer. The description is good at letting you know which one you need, and once you have it, simply go to Prusa Slicer and flash it from there. Finally, we reset the printer, hold down the knob for a few seconds to factory reset the printer and load all of the new values into the EEPROM. You know it's worked when it says Bontech Mark III, and if you like, you can go to the calibration menu and complete the wizard, just like the first time that you used the printer. Before we print, we need to complete some setup and calibration. These next steps are quite easy and therefore strongly recommended. Step one is to set the hot end to be reasonably high temperature and then support the heater block and tighten the nozzle with the appropriate tool. This is called a hot tighten and prevents leakage down the track. We can now load up some filament, turn on the part cooling fan, basically recreating our printing conditions ahead of completing a PID auto tune. This is something I have step-by-step -step instructions for on my calibration website I completed this important step for both printers using the web interface for RepRap and Pronterface for the Prusa Mark III. Even though we set the E-steps according to the instructions, I still took the time to double check and ensure that they were accurate. The steps for this are also on my calibration website under Extruder E-steps calibration. Before you print, you're going to need to re-level the bed for the X1, unless you're running a BL touch like I am, which means instead you're going to have to retune the Z offset. In the case of the Mark III, it was simply a matter of rerunning the first layer calibration wizard. On the Bontech website, there's also specifications for setting up retraction in your slicer. So I started by editing my slicing profile for both printers and importing these values. 
Even so, I still thought it was important to double check them. So I once again used my calibration website to generate a retraction tower with values either side of those suggested. And the results were good, with the X1 being spot on at 0.4 millimeters retraction and the Mark III being very close and needing 0.5 millimeters retraction. Finally, there are recommendations on the website for setting your stepper motor driver current. But because I had pancake steppers before and after on both printers, I haven't felt the need to change them yet and I'm monitoring their temperatures. To test the gripping strength on the filament, I performed a back-to-back -back performance benchmark. This one is covered on the acceleration tuning tab of the calibration website and basically involves connecting via console and sending through manual amounts of filament faster and faster, trying to find the limit of the extrusion speed. Eventually you'll reach a speed where you start to skip steps and or strip filament, so you back off from here to find your safe value. For the X1, the baseline was 380 millimeters per minute, which is already quite good, and the LGX was able to match this. And the reason the LGX isn't an improvement here is that although we have more grip from the dual drive on the filament, the melt zone in the shorter heater block evens things out. For the Mark III, if you will remember was already upgraded with the Bontech extruder, my before result was an outstanding 500 millimeters per minute, and as you might expect, another Bontech upgrade was able to match this. Keep in mind that both of these results will be improved by upping your extrusion temperature. During the assembly process, I took the time to compare the size and weight of the components. For the X1, I'd say the new LGX was slightly more compact, but a little bit longer. The old Titan clone weighed 271 grams, with the LGX being fractionally lighter at 264. On the Mark III, there was quite a big difference in how compact the new system was. The old components weighed 368 grams, and the LGX weighed a little bit lighter at 352 grams. But keep in mind, this printer was already upgraded, which saved over 100 grams compared to the factory components. So the LGX kit over stock is going to be quite an improvement. I also took the time to compare the LGX to a couple of more all-in-one extruder and hot end designs. As you can see, the hair mirror was a little bit more compact than the Titan it replaced, and the LGX in this configuration is a little bit more compact again. However, nothing beats the Big Tree Tech H2 extruder, which uses a smaller stepper motor, and while it's a little bit long, is quite compact overall. A Titan with Volcano is 276 grams, the Hemera 357, an LGX 280 grams, and the Big Tree Tech H2 a sprightly 217 grams. As I said, I will be testing this in future. Let's now turn our attention to some test prints. Now the quality of the prints is going to be dependent on how much tuning you've done for your new hardware. And so far, all I've done is e-steps and retraction. But even so, the results are quite encouraging. Before we start, here are some parameters I use for printing. My X1 normally prints at 100 millimeters per second, and the filament is primarily PLA. My Mark III runs PGTG full time with a base feed rate of 80 millimeters per second. First up is a humble calibration cube, just to ensure everything was all right. And I was pleased to find that it was. And if you're wondering about the bulges on the bottom of the PLA cube, I had a typo in my E-steps and I fixed this mid print and you can see that makes a huge difference. Next up, a vase to test the extrusion consistency and my daughter picked this twisted heart vase. Again, no gaps or problems for either printer. To test accuracy, I decided to print more of these cart twist clamps. Again, both machines were able to produce clean looking parts. The fitment tolerances were perhaps a little tight, but I've yet to adjust my flow rates. This is a really cool design and I highly suggest that you try printing it. Both of these kits included new part cooling, so I printed my torture test. And this is probably the weakest link for me, although you have to remember that I am printing fairly fast. The X1 running PLA definitely coped better, and I'll need to play with my temperatures a little bit more for PETG to get the best out of the Mark III. Finally, a low poly Fox on the Mark III to test the flexible's performance. And I have a roll of super stretchy and super flexible filler flex just for these occasions. Loading it in was easy, and I was able to lock the latch much tighter than I would for a rigid filament, and the manual extruder dial was also handy for feeding the filament through to the tip of the nozzle. I thought I had read something on the Bontech website about printing soft flexibles at 60mm per second, so that's what I went with. 
and at this speed the extruder and hot end combo seem to gobble it up. Just how soft is this filament? This soft, and I think that makes this test a win. Now the price of the LGX means it's definitely not for everyone, but it's really not trying to be. What it's aiming to be is best of the best. I'd love to read your critique of the design and its features down in the comments section. I'm going to do a bit more tuning on these, so thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.